This is for you and Marshall. Okay. Yeah. All right. Lord God and Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the rain that you blessed us with. Father, thank you for this Easter season that you blessed us with. We still, we hear the good word of Easter Sunday and of the glorious victory that our Lord Jesus Christ emerged from the tomb alive and that he is alive forevermore. This is the heart and soul of our faith. This is the very essence of our salvation. This is how with his perfect sacrifice, how we have been reconciled to you and that we are blessed with that faith, that we believe this and that we live in this faith and it permeates every aspect of our lives. That as we now consider our salvation and certainly as Jesus said to his disciples that as he was sent by the Father, so he sent them and we have been sent as well. We carry out the ministry, the mission, the work that you've entrusted to us to proclaim and share this glorious good news of salvation, of resurrection to anyone and everyone worldwide. And that I thank you for so much that this congregation does and that we seek to show forth that glorious truth that in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have the peace of heart and mind and soul that the world cannot give that as we live in this sinful and fallen and decadent world that we are indeed as you have called us to be the light of the world that we live in truth we live in the sanctity of life we live as people of faith to show forth those any who hear who see and who also are brought to faith just as you have brought us to faith. So bless our worship together this morning as we receive your gifts of word of sacrament of forgiveness and faith. Sing the beautiful Easter hymns and rejoice in the fellowship that we have as brothers and sisters in Christ. And that it is in his name always, the resurrected Lord, that we pray and worship this morning. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. And good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. It's good to see you and good to be here together. Uh, definitely quite a dramatic change in the weather from a week ago. And at least what I hear going to be uh, warmer again sometime this week. But you are here. And dear friends, I thank you. I thank you for this occasion, every occasion that we gather together to worship, to sing, to pray to speak the ancient and historic liturgies, to read from scripture, and to be refreshed yet again in that which we already know and that we believe. And that for this resurrection season, for this time of year, that as we especially remember the glorious events that surrounded our Lord's victory over death and the grave, that that victory has now become ours, it's yours. And that in Jesus' name always we worship and live. Thank God. Amen. Amen. And so with that then, dear friends, let's begin our worship. We'll sing the opening hymn, which is hymn number 465. Angels loud and clear Repeat their 
your song of, of glory here. Christ has triumphed. Christ has triumphed. Alleluia. 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 Eternal is the gift we bring. Therefore our heart with rapture sings. Christ has triumphed, he is living. Now still he comes to give us life. And by his presence stills all strife. Christ has triumphed, he is living. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Oh, fill us, Lord, with dauntless love, set heart and will on things above, that we conquer through your triumph. Grant grace sufficient for life's day, that by our lives we truly say, Christ has triumphed, He is living. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Adoring praises now we bring. The heavenly blessed sing Christ has triumphed, Alleluia. Be to the Father and our Lord, to Spirit blessed, most holy God, all the glory never ending. And dear friends, this morning we'll use Divine Service Setting 1 that begins on page 151 in the front of the Lutheran Service Book. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority. I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up to salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wondrous works. 
glory in His holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that He has done. His miracles and the judgments He uttered. He remembers His covenant forever. The word that He commanded for a thousand generations. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, please. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be peace. Of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, and glory are His. Victory for our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. For the Lamb who was slain has begun His reign. Feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, Grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
dear friends, please be seated. Thank you. Our first reading from the Holy Scriptures this morning, this second Sunday of Easter, comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so it is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Thutis rose up claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, Keep away from these men and let them alone, for if this plan or this undertaking is of men, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice. And when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for his name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that the Christ is Jesus. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I turn to the first epistle of St. Peter, chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And dear friends, let us rise as we read from the Holy Gospel. And 
And the Holy Gospel is according to St. John, chapter 20. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgive, forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in His name. And this is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And dear friends, let us confess our faith. In the words of the Apostles' Creed, which is on page 159, let us confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, please be seated. Thank you. Dear friends in Christ, you might recognize that gospel lesson that we read, considered just a moment ago. It was part of the Easter story account that I read to you last Sunday, Easter Sunday, from John chapter 20. And that beautiful postscription, those last words that St. John recorded at the end of the chapter that are so meaningful, so powerful, and so true. Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in His name. We considered several wonderful stories of people who heard and saw Jesus and who were brought to faith or who were strengthened in their faith. And that's true for us as well. You are people of faith, people of powerful faith, people of saving faith. And there's a distinction there to believe in something else. And yes, we all do believe in other things and other people. 
people who we trust, people who we admire, but it is the faith that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ given to us by the Holy Spirit in our baptism, strengthened in the Blessed Sacrament. That is the faith that saves, that trusts and clings to the very words that Jesus who said, you have believed because, talking to Thomas, because you have seen me, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. That's the rest of us. And we haven't seen Jesus, yes, physically with our own eyes. That day is coming, by the way. That day is coming. Job speaks about that. But it is indeed in this time, in this world, that you and I placed here, rightly so, to accomplish the outcome of our faith. That's what St. Peter writes. We'll get to that in just a minute. The outcome of your faith being the salvation of your souls. That's the whole point of all of this. It's for us to manifest, to be the people of God, the church, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints. Those are two names for the same thing. The Holy Christian Church, you are, is the communion of saints. But Jesus says something else here in John chapter 20 that's good for us to consider this morning during these weeks of Easter, and then as we make our way uh, into the late spring and into the summer months, where our focus transitions from the life and the work and the ministry and the drama of Holy Week and Good Friday and Easter Sunday of our Lord Jesus Christ, to now gaze out at the world and carry out the ministry that Jesus specifically says right here. He says to his disciples, peace be with you. And that isn't just him wishing that upon them, that is what he gives them. You and I have that peace, dear friends. We have the peace that transcends the world. The world cannot give the peace. Yes, we may be frightened, we may be fearful, we may be anxious, but always, 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 by virtue of our faith, we have that glorious gift and the promise of God that He is with us, and that He sustains us and goes with us wherever our life's path takes us. And then our Lord gives John's example of the Great Commission. As He says, The Father has sent me as the Father has sent me, even so I am am sending you. And so with that, I have a few announcements to make, a few things to let you know about. One being, and this isn't just for the ladies, this is for everybody, but specifically for the ladies, you have in your bulletin this morning an insert that gives you all of the details, all of the specifics, about the spring rally of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League that will be this coming Saturday at Zion Lutheran Church in Atlantic. Now, hear me out. If you have never been to a rally of the LWML, this is the one to go to. The speaker who will be making a presentation to the ladies next Saturday at Zion in Atlantic has been at a rally before. We've heard her before. She's the executive director of the Agape Pregnancy Resource Center in Des Moines carrying out a very, very important, vital ministry that we support. Come. Registration is at 8.30. The program starts at 9 o'clock. Lunch will be served. Come. And between now and next Saturday, I invite you to flip that half-sheet insert over, and there you will see a list of various items that they need at the center. 
in order to care for mothers, in order to care for families. So check over that list. If there's anything there which uh, strikes your fancy that you would like to give as part of the end gathering, the basket is in the narthex. It'll be there until Friday at the very last minute. And so to consider that, consider that ministry because in a very, very tangible way, and that certainly is the most effective kind of ministry, is ministry that meets real need with real people in the real world at real time, and this is a good example. So please, please, please consider prayerfully, this is the one to come to, and you will certainly enjoy the fellowship. The ladies of the LWML, as you know, everybody knows, does important, vitally important work. We got the word this week that the national organization, the LWML, yet again, yet again, they have never failed in setting their goals, have met their national goal of like some $2.2 million. Those are the mites pennies and nickels and dimes and quarters. It takes a bunch of quarters to come up with two and a half almost million dollars, and yet they did it again. They have never failed in the history of the organization to meet their mission project goals, and this is no exception. Absolutely faithful, amazing, wonderful news to give to you. There are other events that are coming up, other opportunities. The National Convention of the LWML in Milwaukee this summer. There is also, by the way, and this is for the young people, and I've handed out some of the information to some of you, of a conference that will be held at Concordia University in Chicago that is specifically intended for young people. This is important. I can tell you, having to speak about that for a minute, you can go online you can go to YouTube or you can go on TikTok. Yeah, I, I had to be, I, I, I had my first foray into TikTok and it's a very, very controversial, you know, the, the, the Chinese are spying on us through TikTok. But nevertheless, I watched a couple of those little video clips on TikTok and what this was about was a dramatic case in point of the day and age in which we live of the culture and the decadence and the moral decay that is a part of it, of young people talking about how difficult it is, more so than ever before, to meet quality, quality young people in order for meeting and possibly relationships forming and marriage. Very, very difficult, more so than ever before. The conference in Chicago is intended to help address that. That's important. This isn't just a conference for matchmaking. This is a conference in which indeed everybody, and President Matthew Harrison, President of the Missouri Senate, will be there. And he will address the young people, and this is a national conference. Have no idea how many people will be there, but this is important, especially in this day and age, and especially with the Missouri Senate being such a pro-life, pro-marriage, and pro-family church body. This is outreach that is vital, critical, more so now than it has ever been. Last item in, in this little item of announcements. <clears throat> the, the new graduate, or rather the new incoming class from the seminary in St. Louis, give you a point of comparison, there were a hundred of us, hundred of us guys in my class who graduated in 1989. The incoming class at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis this year, 23 young men. The entire synod has mobilized and have directed substantial amounts of funding in order to address that problem, that situation, which is absolutely critical. Some 600, we're told, 600 congregations in the Missouri Synod are without a pastor. 
and have really slim hope of getting a pastor. The seminary, both of them, are in essence saying anybody, everybody, children, grandchildren, brothers, perhaps you, consider, go online, give them a call, pray about it. The state and the future of the Missouri Synod depends upon these items, these ministries that we have. And why? Because we live in the day and age in which we do. Immoral, godless, that people who genuinely do not have the faith that you have. And what happens for someone who doesn't have the faith, especially the Easter faith, the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no hope, there's no direction. They honestly don't know what's right and wrong. They honestly don't know how they should live. They, they look to the future and what they see is black. And so Jesus says, rightly so, as the Father hath sent me, he did his job, he accomplished his mission, even so I am sending you. You. All of us, dear friends. This epistle lesson that we considered this morning, I'll tell you another little personal story. This epistle lesson from 1 Peter chapter 1, this is a favorite section that I frequently use at funerals because it expresses a joy and a hope that only we have in faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, even for that day when we will breathe our last in this life and breathe our first breath in eternal life. And why is that? Because St. Peter, who suffered, who was beaten up, as we read about in the, in the account in Acts, says this amazing thing that reiterates Jesus who told Thomas that you've seen me, blessed are those who have not seen me. St. Peter dovetails on that and he says, though you do not now see him, you believe in him. Yes, you do. And rejoice with joy that is inexpressible. Not necessarily to mean, you know, that we're jumping up for joy, but because it is a joy that transcends the world, it is a joy that only God gives and filled with glory obtaining the outcome of your faith this is the purpose of easter dear friends the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls that everything we carry out all of the various ministries that i shared with you and that's just three of them there's there's a whole bunch of them all of it to show forth and to carry out the vital work that God has entrusted to us and given to us in order for what purpose? That for anyone who does not have the faith that you have, the faith that is inexpressible, the faith that you and I just look at each other and say, yes, we understand, we know what St. Peter is meaning. <clears throat> to show forth the light of the resurrected Savior to a dark world that is literally in the blackest of dark so that others who you love, who you know, and even our strang the strangers and our enemies, to know that the faith which you have to which you've been blessed and called by our resurrected Lord to give away. There's plenty to go around. And certainly it is true. All of this that we do, all of the work, all of the various ministries that we have responsibility and privilege to carry out serve one purpose. And that is the purpose to which St. Peter describes. Obtaining the outcome of your faith. The salvation of your souls. The Synod also will have its synodical convention this summer. 
You may or may not remember that we voted a year ago to delay the Synodical Convention a year in order to get through COVID and the pandemic. And that too, that is the primary legislative body of the Synod and they will be making decisions to carry forth the ministry of our church body worldwide. Several Lutheran church bodies around the world who are seeking fellowship with us, amazing as that is, thanks be to God, as well as everything else, everything else that we do, the ministry that we have, the message that we convey, the truth that we tell of a crucified and glorified and resurrected Savior who gives the peace that is inexpressible, the joy, the hope that is from God that does transcend and gives us the quality of life that even with the bumps and bruises that go along the way, that nonetheless, nonetheless, dear friends, you have that, the gift from our Heavenly Father in Christ. It is a gift that the vast majority of humanity does not have. And so we hear the words of our Lord, the resurrected and glorified Lord, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. We are sent people, dear friends. Consider, prayerfully consider, these examples, these opportunities to serve and to share your faith and for so many more and so many others. Thanks be to God, dear friends. Thanks be to God that we who believe in Him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible. It transcends. It only is from God. It is a holy joy and filled with glory obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls in our crucified and resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Alleluia, dear friends. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, Lord, we hear the words of our Lord, the resurrected and glorified Lord Jesus Christ, who as He was sent into the world by the Father, so He has sent us. Father, the laborers are few, the harvest is plentiful, that you have called us, you have blessed us with gifts and talents and opportunities to share and proclaim in all of the ways that we have, that you have shown to us, that you've given to us. Father, I thank you for the peace and the joy and the hope that even in the midst of our own anxieties, even in the midst of our own fallen sinfulness, that nonetheless this hope prevails, it transcends, it is a gift from you, and that you have called us to share it, to give it, to show witness to it, that I thank you, I thank you for this wonderful congregation, that as we continue to prepare for celebrating 150 years of ministry, of proclaiming Christ and Him crucified, that we pray that as we celebrate, that we also look to the future to continue to carry forth this wonderful and glorious ministry that you have given to the church. And that it is in Jesus' name that we pray and thank you. Alleluia. Amen and amen. And dear friends, the service of the sacrament continues... On page 160, we continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, <coughs> we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, for this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them as well and said, Drink from this cup, all of you, for this is the New Testament which is in my blood and is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Dear friends, welcome, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, welcome, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven and is given for you. Jesus Christ, given and shed. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Take and eat the body of Christ. Our 
Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, welcome, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven. Of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Christ is risen. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, welcome, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. For this is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven and is given for you. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, welcome, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven and is given for you. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, welcome, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven and is given for you. Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, welcome, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven and is given for you. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given and shed for the remission of your sins. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, welcome, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And our Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. And the Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. Amen. Amen.
our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, welcome, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the body of Christ. And the Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. And the Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. Amen. Take and eat, for this is the body of Christ, which is the bread of heaven. Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Welcome, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. Amen. Take and eat the body of Christ. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Now may the true body and the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come and the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And dear friends, our closing hymn is hymn number 480. Please be seated. Yes.
He's risen, He's risen, Christ Jesus the Lord. He opened death's prison, the incarnate true Word. Break forth, hosts of heaven, in jubilant song. And earth, sea, and mountain, their praises prolong. The foe was triumphant when on Calvary the Lord of creation was nailed to the tree. In Satan's domain did the host shout and cheer. For Jesus was slain, whom the evil ones fear. Was their triumph the Savior arose, and death, hell, and say, he vanquished his foes. The conquering Lord lifts his banner on high. He lives, yes, he lives, and will never. sting that fear you no more oh. Oh. blood does atone redeemed and forgiven we now are his own then sing your hosanna and raise tidings that all may rejoice. Lord, honor and praise to the Lamb that was slain with fire.